My name is Ted Gunn. I'm the shop manager for CLAC's Welding Training Centre. Along with me today is McKenna Snyder. She is an apprentice that works for me. She's a first year welding apprentice. She hails out of Sturgeon Comp. She is an awesome little welder. The process we're going to be doing today is flux core CWB flat test plate. Believe it or not, the flat plate is the most failed plate on test day. And it could be because people take it too nonchalantly, but the biggest problem with flux core is they put in too big of beads on the first pass and they don't get into the root. The key to passing this test is small hot beads. So McKenna will be welding today at a very high voltage and high amperage. The key thing is putting in the small beads and she's going to demonstrate that and then she will move on to weld the plate out completely. Right over here we have a power source and we have a wire feeder. You need both parts to make the process happen. The power source is supplying the weld power. The wire feeder is feeding the wire and controlling all the arc settings on the feeder itself. So you gotta turn the machine on. These machines are multi-process. So when we look down here, we've got it set for MIG. And then on this one, we have a control that's called uh, inductance. So we're gonna turn that up to about 75. An inductance, just for a layman's term, is the force of the arc burning off the end of the wire. And with the higher the inductance, the more liquid the puddle is. In the flat position, we like a lot of drive and we like a lot of fluid motion. Now up on the top part of this machine is where she is setting the voltage and the wire speed. If you'll notice, she's running 28 volts, 550 inches a minute. The 550 inches a minute is amperage. She's gonna be welding super hot and she's gonna be welding super fast. When uh, in the MIG process, the wire is fed through a drive system. In this case, it's a four roll drive system. And everything happens when you pull the trigger on this gun. The gas turns on, the wire starts feeding, everything's, it's semi-automatic, it's what we call semi-automatic. And uh, the wire she's using today is uh, a product by Prax Air, it's called Vantage Wire, it's 045 diameter and it's one of the more, not the brand so much, but the diameter size, 045 is one of the most common wire sizes used in the industry today. Here we have a CWB plate, standard plate. Uh, CWB plates are have two different uh, gap openings. The flat, the vertical and the overhead use a half inch gap opening. The horizontal has a 5 16 gap opening. You have a square side and a beveled side. All the time when you're welding the plate, you weld the square side first, beveled side second. During the weld test, you have to do stops and restarts. The reason for a stop and a restart is to make sure you can do a good tie-in. The area that the stops are in are right close to where the cut point is when we cut the coupons to make sure that you did get a good tie-in. It's part of the test. If you can't tie in a weld, there's a problem. So McKenna will be striking up the arc. On the test plate is six inches. The examiner judges the whole six inch surface. We give you seven and a half inch of backing bar. We tell you to use the whole backing bar. Start out at this end and weld right through to this end. The root passes have to go in the same direction. After that, if you want, you can change direction. It doesn't matter. But the roots have to go in one direction and your restart has to start at the crater and go out to the end of the plate. To further explain something here, um, the wire that is being used is actually a dual shield wire. It is flux cord wire, and we're also using a shielding gas. In this case, it's 80% argon, 20% CO2. So we call it a dual shield. In the, in the industry, they call it flux core. The process is flux core. The reason that flux core came into being was for production. MIG wires, whether it be solid wire, flux core, metal core, is all about production, getting the job done. For years, uh, 
We used to use stick rods to build buildings, to build bridges and everything. And over time, when MIG first came in, it wasn't as developed as, as it is today. Today we got better wires, better gases, better equipment. But the biggest thing is, is production. It's way faster than doing it with stick and it gives a real good sound well. When you're doing the CWB test, there is no grinding allowed. Uh, that's a little bit of a different thing for most welders. They're used to having the grinder in their right hand. Okay, but this is a weld test. So there's no grinder allowed other than a grinder with a wire wheel to clean the flux off. Again, it comes down to speed. Yes, you can use a chip and hammer and a wire brush, but that's archaic. Okay, you ready? Ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> So one thing I'd like to point out here is if you notice McKenna is using a vice grip as an armrest, one of the biggest things is to make sure you're well anchored when welding. The other thing you'll notice she was using was a little bobby pin, it's just an old welding rod to mark the stops. One of the most crucial things on a test day is you have to have the stops in the right zone. If not, it's a fail. So she is using this to, to tell her when to stop. She angles it so she can get the nozzle right in there. She has her first root on the square side, her second root on the beveled side, and she has a gap in between there to put the third pass down there because the key is small hot beads. Three pass root is about 85% more successful than a two pass. Now when you can see where McKenna has welded and she has a, a groove down the center that she can get in there. In this case, she's gotten it a little tight so she will turn the wire feed up to about 600 inches a minute to make sure she gets in there on that third pass. One of the other things you'll notice is she's using a pair of what commonly known as make pliers. You can use this tool to grab a hot nozzle to take the tip out when it's hot, but use to trim your wire on all your restarts so you get a good clean start. Now one of the things I'd really like to point out to people is that when you're running flux core, you're dragging. When there's slag, you drag. A lot of people uh, that do MIG welding or metal core have a tendency to push, that's okay to do that. If you push when you're running flux core, you'll trap flux inside the weld zone, and when the plate gets bent after, it'll push out and tear the plate open. So you're always dragging when there's slag. So the end result is a nice plate welded out that's not too wide, not too heavy. You're allowed maximum reinforcement of one eighth of an inch. If it's over one eighth of an inch, it's a fail. One of the other things I'd like to point out at this time is on CWB day, 
You got 45 minutes to weld the plate out, each position, and she did that in ample time. But a lot of people do uh, time out, and I can't explain why they time out. She has used the runoff tab, the runoff tab and the run-on tab. Her cap is nice and flush. Job well done. The test plate out on test day, the examiner tells you to put it under the fan. After that plate has cooled down enough, we have our apprentices, McKenna's one of them, they process the plates. They cut three quarters of an inch off each end. They then put the plate in the milling machine. They mill the backing bar off. Then they put it back in the saw. They cut it into three inch and a half strips. We then hand those back to the welder. The welder grinds the cap off flush. If he's real nice to the examiner and myself, he'll radius the edges of the plate. After he's ground them, he puts them back under the fan to cool. Once they're cool enough, we take them to the press and we bend them. The plates all have numbers on them. One, two, three. They have an identification number as to who the welder is. And they also have what position number they are. In this case, it would be one. When we put them in the press, plate number one and three are root bends. Plate number two is a face bend. Put them through the press, they come out good and clean, got your ticket and you're on your way.